most everyone has an affection for the king salmon. Whether it be fishing, magnificent creatures swim upstream, salmon offer something to everyone. This is the story of one community's efforts to bring back the salmon and their close relative, the steelhead trout. So many others in the early 1990s has seen a decline in these valuable fishery resources. Fishing salmon here for about 15 years and I saw that the uh, salmon were depleting here on the coast. And uh, I thought that uh, maybe we could do something to bring them back. So uh, I was reading about these foreign countries having uh, ocean pen rearing, you know, and I thought, well, if they can do it, why couldn't we do it? Well, we figured that if we could raise salmon here and release them, that they would probably stay around. If they're off too far, they'd be more or less domesticated. And we figured that uh, we'd at least have some salmon back to fish again. Central Coast Salmon Enhancement is a nonprofit volunteer corporation dedicated to the enhancement and restoration of the Central Coast Salmon Fishery and San Luis Obispo Creek. Three, the program has been stocking local ocean waters with 70,000 king salmon yearlings at Port San Luis. Each year, these fish return to the Central Coast. Many are landed by fishermen, and others return to San Luis Obispo Creek to spawn. As mature adult salmon return to the creek, they are captured and transported to a holding facility. Sure. Our fish return. They've been coming back since about 1987, and we've had hundreds of fish coming up San Luis Obispo Creek, a creek that hasn't seen salmon in at least 45 years. Our project, because we get a lot of volunteers that go out with a 300-foot, 200-pound beach seine, and we go into the estuary area of the creek, and the fish always seem to hold in one deep area. So we wrap that area with the net, and. Uh, as the, it just explodes with action and, and there's fish everywhere. Our biggest fish that we've had return to date, I believe, was a 43-pounder, and that was quite a salmon to see in San Luis Obispo Creek. Fish that we capture, some of them go back to the hatchery to make more salmon, and others we donate to community organizations that feed homebound seniors and disabled and people that will certainly appreciate a good meal. They're ripe and ready to spawn. Eggs are fertilized and then placed in an incubator. The eggs hatch and the small larvae, called sac fry, are left undisturbed while their yolk sacs are absorbed and mouth parts, digestive tracts, and fins are developed. Called fingerlings emerge from the incubator ready to begin swimming and feeding. For the next four months, the fish are fed until they grow large enough to enter salt water. The fingerlings are then transported by truck to the rearing pens at Port San Luis. Our pen rearing project starts with about a three inch fish and we take these and we put them in plastic lined pens out in our, our plastic lined cages out in the ocean filled with fresh water. We start to pump salt water into these cages over about a three day period and transform these fish into a salt water salmon. Feed these fish every day, about six hours a day. Um, they just eat and eat until they get up to a, about an eight inch fish or a one eighth of a pound and that takes about another three months. At that time, we, we remove the nets and we set, send the fish free, and after about three years, they come back. The fish that return to the local area as a result of our project, I would say benefits everybody. Whether you like to catch fish, eat fish, or just watch fish swim upstream, uh, we put them in the water for everyone, and that's why our motto is fish for everyone. Over the years, Many Californians have reaped the benefit of the King Salmon Rearing and Stocking Program. This creation of the natural home San Luis Obispo Creek for many fish on the Central Coast. The creek has had its water polluted, capacity reduced, and passage blocked. Central Coast Salmon Enhancement volunteers, seeing a need to restore fish habitat, have begun work reviving the creek to a more pristine state. Once a year we hold San Luis Obispo Creek Day and this has evolved over the last few years from a creek cleanup into a fairly big event where community members come out and they, we have displays and they can learn all about the life that, th that depends on the creek and all the beneficial uses of the creek as well as we supply the bags and directions and, and the people go out and they pick up trash and there is a lot of trash in this creek every year 
and uh, we're doing a lot of good to improve the habitat for all the wild animals and uh, getting people closer to the creek environment so they can really see what a beautiful place it is and that it is indeed worth preserving. Education about fish and wildlife habitat is a significant aspect of the Central Coast Salmon Enhancement. To further these goals, many presentations and tours are given to service clubs, schools, and others. Our education program is the Salmon Trout Education Program, which involves a classroom incubator aquarium where we stock this system once a year with trout eggs and students get to actually watch the fish, the eggs hatch and the fish grow in their classrooms. Once the fish get up to a stockable size, maybe an inch, they take them and they stock them in a local body of water, which gives them a real hands-on experience. Uh, the curriculum and the lesson plan and everything that comes along with it fulfills all of the science requirements for the state of California, so the teachers are very anxious to get their hands on this uh, kit and uh, they're, they're, we don't have enough to supply all the teachers. We have a big waiting list right now. The value, history, and future of salmon in California play a vital role in the Central Coast Salmon Enhancement Program. An educated community to monitor and protect the aquatic resources of the Central Coast will improve quality of life and benefit everyone. Coast Salmon Enhancement has plans for future expansion of its facilities, creek restoration, and aquatic education programs. To support these projects, funding must come from many sources. The funding for our organization has really varied over the years. For the last few years, we've had strong support from the Commercial Salmon Stamp Committee, which is a tax that the commercial fishermen levy against themselves. We also have built a very lot of members of the community and businesses contributing. Uh, we have uh, one of our big supporters, 2000. But I don't want any one group or organization because I'm sure I wouldn't mention them all here, and the list is very, very long. But a lot of big corporations and a lot of community organizations and a lot of individuals have made this program possible. A group of fishing enthusiasts is trying to save the salmon here. Eric Spillman has that story tonight. Used to be you could catch a king salmon most places on the central coast. Nowadays, they're harder to find here. Man destroyed some of their spawning grounds. Local fishermen thought that was a shame. Their nonprofit group called Salmon Enhancement Incorporated is now breeding salmon just offshore from Port San Luis. I've had a lot of fun over the years fishing salmon when the salmon were good here. And then to see them just dis disappear, it's, uh, and to not have them for our future generations, I just couldn't see that happening. What he and the other fishermen started is this breeding area. Thousands of fish now live in each of these pens. When they first got here, they were only about two inches long, but after months of careful feeding, they now measure 12 inches and are ready to be released into the ocean. But before they go, some will have to be tagged so that biologists can keep track of them. 
if, if you didn't tag the fish, there'd be no way to know which king salmon caught in the area were from this project. So we tag a proportion of the fish, and then from that we can infer statistically how many of our fish are being returned. Finally, they are ready to swim free, some 20,000 of them. Put a guy on each one of those other corners to let them down. What we do is open up one end of the net and push the other side and just basically pull the net out from underneath the fish, and that allows the fish to just kind of scamper out on their own. You see there's some pretty big, pretty big fish in there, some of them. I've got my name on a couple of those. <laughs> Look how swift they Now I think we better let it down all the way. The salmon that were released here today will get a lot bigger and we'll be back in a few years. That'll give fishermen here a chance to catch a type of fish that almost disappeared from this area. At Port San Luis Harbor, Eric Spillman, Action News. About 60,000 new residents tonight. They're each about six weeks old and three inches long all part of a special effort to bring salmon back to local waters. The truckload of salmon arrived this morning from a fishery in Minnesota, the first step in replenishing a species once plentiful on the central coast. At one time, salmon used to run freely up, the, up San Luis Creek and in all the local waters. They even ran up the uh, L.A. River one time, if you can believe that. Now nothing runs in uh, a lot of these uh, creeks but sewage, and uh, we're trying to re establish, establish a population. Bucket by bucket, the fish are unloaded and then lowered down to a floating pen. Up to now, they've lived in fresh water, but they've got to adapt to an ocean environment. To help ease the transition, a saltwater mixture is slowly being pumped into their new home. It will be about 10 days before the changeover is complete. The salmon will spend the next six months being cared for in the pen until they're strong enough to survive in the open sea. In a few years, most will be caught by sport and commercial fishermen. By that time, they'll weigh between 12 and 25 pounds each. The money to fund the effort is raised entirely through private donations by the Central Coast Salmon Enhancement Program. The idea is to provide a boost, not just for the fishing industry, but the entire local economy. Here for the program, organizers say the initial yearly investment of around $30,000 produces nearly $2 million for Central Coast businesses. About 28,000 salmon were given their freedom today near Port San Luis. Dan Godwin reports on a unique program to help the fishing industry on the Central Coast. They've been living in their floating pen for about two and a half months now. In each of four separate compartments, the salmon swim in a crowded circular formation, 24 hours a day. They have to to stay alive, get oxygen and cluster, gills to breathe. Members of the Central Coast Salmon Enhancement Program keep a constant eye on their progress. The goal of the program is to replenish a species once plentiful in local waters fish do have to put up with having their growth checked periodically, and some get one of their ventral fins clipped as a means of identification. But they're also fed a high-protein diet for their trouble that seems to be a popular flavor. Yeah, you can see some of the Members of the program chose today to release half of the 56,000 salmon in captivity. At six months old, they've outgrown the cramped quarters inside the pen. They'll most likely swim up and down the coast of California before returning to the port. Uh, hopefully all of them, as many as are able to survive. Some of them will be lost uh, as fish food for other bigger fish, and um, uh, the rest should, should make it back. It will be three to five years before we see most of these fish around here again, but if you're a fisherman, it'll be worth the wait. By that time, they'll each weigh between 20 and 25 pounds. At Port San Luis, Dan... Another success story tonight, three years ago, an environmental program was started in Port San Luis Harbor. Thousands of king salmon were set free in an effort to increase their population. The hope was the fish would come back. As Mark Mathis reports tonight, the hope is coming true. Three years ago, this little guy was brought here from Minnesota. He and thousands of his buddies were part of a new effort to bring back declining numbers of king salmon off the central coast. When the nonprofit salmon enhancement program began, Experts weren't sure it would work, but some familiar fins are proving it does. When the fish are real small at a very young age, they have their right ventral fin clipped, as you can see right here. Uh, that way we uh, are able to identify them upon their return as being a, central, a salmon enhancement fish. Uh, in the last four years, we've released over 150,000 king salmon uh, out in, in Port San Luis near the breakwater, and we expect their return within three to five years, and here it is 
three years and we are seeing the first return. The place the salmon are returning to is freshwater San Luis Creek, the nearest place the fish could call home. Paul Cleveland is now checking the condition of the creek for what he hopes will be a big return. The creek is not suited for natural salmon hatching, so the fish will be captured for artificial spawning in a hatchery. And as local fishermen are now beginning to see the results of this program, they're excited. The more fish they can get, the better off their economy is going to be, too, for the commercial fishermen also. Uh -huh. And the sport people just love, you know, I've sport fished for salmon all my life, and I just love it. So they make it better. When the first rain comes, the salmon are expected to run the creek. At that time, program workers will come out with nets to catch the fish and then take them to a hatchery, which will mark the first complete cycle of the program. In Avila Beach, Mark Mathis, KSBY, Action News. Now, the Salmon Enhancement Program is a nonprofit organization that depends on private contributions. If you'd like to make a donation or just want to find out more about the program, you can call 773-3316. The number again is 773-3316. First, Dan Godwin is live in our San Luis Obispo newsroom to explain why this phenomenon is taking place. Dan? Dave, experts estimate there are currently hundreds of salmon heading up the creek to spawn. The reason the species has made such an amazing comeback is due to the Central Coast Salmon Enhancement Project. Today, members of that program were neck deep in the brackish water at the mouth of the creek, a few hundred yards from where it meets Avila Beach. The idea was to capture as many salmon as possible in a giant net. That will allow biologists to determine how many salmon are in the creek, how many offspring they might produce, and other important information. As you can see, most of the fish are very good size, some weighing up to 30 pounds. The Salmon Enhancement Program has been going on for five years now. About 60,000 baby salmon are released each year in the ocean off Port San Luis. But in order for the program to really be a success, backers say San Luis Creek must be cleaned up because sewage discharge and other factors are making it impossible for the fish to thrive. The polluted conditions mean the salmon won't spawn and, of course, that's why they swam up the creek to begin with. Dave. Hmm, that's interesting. Dan, who's responsible for cleaning up the creek? Well, there's really no one agency that's, that's in charge. The city of San Luis Obispo is uh, responsible for cleaning up the sewage. They say there are many other sources of pollution in the creek. So what's happening now is that a coalition of environmental groups is forming to raise the money and the public awareness that will be needed to, to do the cleanup. Okay, thanks a lot, Dan. Those salmon definitely are huge. I didn't realize they were so big. Back here at home, 50,000 baby salmon are off to a good start at Port San Luis. The salmon fingerlings, as they're called, are being transferred into beds where they'll gradually be introduced to a saltwater environment later. They'll be fed, protected, and later released so that in three or four years they can come back fully grown. It's all part of the six-year-old Central Coast Salmon Enhancement Program. And President Jay Elder hopes eventually all this will no longer be necessary. What we're hoping to do here is not only increase education through the uh, schools and uh, public awareness programs, but to uh, increase the habitat in the creeks so that these fish here possibly will spawn naturally in the years to come. Elder says the project is already producing results. The salmon catch this year and last have increased dramatically. And to celebrate, the group is holding a barbecue Sunday afternoon that will... Well, all the action in Port San Luis was on the grill this afternoon. The Salmon Enhancement Project Celebration Barbecue fed hundreds of people and raised thousands of dollars to help keep king salmon in supply. That project started six years ago and paid off for the first time last year. Salmon fingerlings are fed and protected in the waters off Harford Pier for several months. When they mature, they return from the ocean, and there's plenty of evidence of that return here today. No word yet on just how many people turned out for the fish fry, but organizers tell us. On the Central Coast, a once common sight may be making a comeback. Salmon have virtually disappeared from the region where they thrived some 40 years ago. The Central Coast Salmon Enhancement Project hopes to change that. And as Cheryl Emery reports, they've gotten a good start with a little help from their friends. It doesn't look like much, just a little shack, something like a storage shed, but it represents the future of an entire population. 10,000 eyed salmon eggs are getting a start in life here. It'll be the first time in decades that salmon have actually hatched on the Central Coast, and it's only possible under these carefully controlled conditions, and about $20,000 worth of money and equipment donations. The property, the power, and the well come free, courtesy of Rob Rossi in San Luis Bay Estate. With all that, there are still no guarantees. So out of 10,000, is there any way to know how many of these will survive? Um, no, this is an experiment. We'd like to say all of them. Maybe we will. These 
these fish will be here till April, into April, 1st of May, at which time we'll take them out and put them in saltwater cages out on the end of Hartford Pier and transfer them from their freshwater environment to saltwater. Eventually, they'll be released into the ocean, come back fully grown in three to five years. Ultimately, their success will depend on what happens here in San Luis Creek, and that will depend very much on everyone. Right now, young salmon can't survive in the creek. People have to think about every time they wash their car, every time they flush their toilet, every time they spray a pesticide or an herbicide on their, on their front yard, that they're affecting the water quality of San Luis Creek. We're attempting to inform the community as well as work together with other agencies to make, make the habitat improvements so the native steelhead and our salmon will have a future. In San Luis Obispo, Cheryl Emery, KSBY Action News. Obispo, but as News Channel 12's Terry Chappelle reports, an experimental fish hatchery is slowly bringing them back. With the help of age-old instincts and an experiment by the Central Coast Salmon Enhancement Group, this salmon is one of many that made its way from the ocean to nets set at the Port San Luis Harbor this year. Our program began seven years ago as a pilot program, an experiment of sorts, to determine if we could uh, release salmon here and have them return to this area to contribute to the fishery. The project is special because salmon have been declining here for over 45 years. Since we started seven years ago, uh, we have released over uh, 330,000 salmon into the ocean out here at Port San Luis Harbor. Salmon released about three years ago are finally making their way back from the ocean and into this channel. From here, they'll swim up San Luis Obispo Creek to reproduce. The problem is that San Luis Obispo Creek is too polluted to allow them to reproduce. So they're caught and brought back to the hatchery where their eggs will have a chance to survive. We'll be uh, producing the first Central Coast salmon in over 45 years. Today, Andrea Seastrand was presented with a resolution to honor her late husband, Assemblyman Eric Seastrand, who gave $75,000 toward the experiment. Now the group is looking for more donations and volunteers to assure that the salmon and the hatchery will be around Terry Chappelle, News Channel. Affect our fish returning into San Luis Obispo Creek, and uh, the returning fish are where we get our eggs for future generations. But we can uh, compensate for that by getting eggs from out of town. Cleveland says it will take a year of rain to wash away the sandbar, preventing large fish from entering the San Luis Obispo Creek. Drought is affecting everything. Sure is. It's unfortunate. Central Coast Creeks are also getting a facelift today as hundreds of volunteers look for litter before it runs into the ocean. The volunteers split up into groups honing in on specific areas, including San Luis Creek. A volunteer cleaning this area was especially surprised to find an old chair in the creek bed. Findings like this and other non-biodegradable waste is part of particular concern to a group called the Central Coast Salmon Enhancement. It strives for a clean fisheries habitat in the creeks and is amazed at how much garbage is found. Last year we had 200 people participate in this creek cleanup and we filled a 42-foot trailer full of trash. It's incredible how much trash ends up in the creek every year. Some hard-to-find pieces of litter were tagged with prize stickers redeemable for things like CDs, T-shirts, and massages. Scaring those fish.
Anybody got a clean hand to stir them with? Okay. Just kind of stir them okay until they get on the bottom. Okay, that's still the first one. That's all he spent. Okay, boss.
Barbecue. The happened, biggest one yet. We got Steven Stills Band here, the, Norton Buffalo, uh, Bare Naked Ladies. Um, got the regular barbecue going with the salmon steaks and everything. And uh, it's pretty big. And hopefully we're planning on lots of people and ultimately lots of money. We take them out to the... Pretty photogenic. Some of the local volunteers in action, working hard. <laughs> oh, something. Well, we got one security guy there. Put Roger right here for now. You got that guy over there, Chris. I, I've been looking everywhere for you guys. <laughs> 